Hi, and welcome to ClickCentral.com. Uh, today we're going to be talking about error traps within the code. These are really useful. Um, sometimes you'll get a load statement, let's say, from an SQL database, and for some reasons it doesn't work. But not every time. It does work often. It's just now and again it fails. And really, what you don't want ClickView to do is come to a grinding hole if there's just been a problem which, if you waited you know, 10 seconds, a minute, and try it again, it would work. Um, and like I said, these are sometimes no issues. Okay, so we're going to create a script. Um, we can't actually see it working in this example, but we can write the script, see the logic, um, and then obviously you can apply that to your um, final designs and, and see it working. I'm going to load from a pretend QVD, it doesn't exist. Um, and load it. Now let's assume that this is, you know, a failing now and again. So we need to really build up an error trap around that. So the first thing we need to do, we need to switch off the actual error message that would make ClickView fail, either via the QMC or if you're running it locally. And we do that by setting the error mode to zero. So now, after this, any error that ClickView encounters, it will just continue. Now the data still won't load, it, if you had an error here, the data wouldn't load, it would carry on. Um, and then you just end up without that data table in your model. But you have to be very careful with set error mode zero. I mean, my advice would be to isolate the areas where you do have issues and known issues like a data load, and then switch it back on again afterwards, and we can switch it back on. So there we go, and that'll switch it on. Switch it off here. If it's error, it'll basically resume next. We'll just continue with the old old program as it's on error, resume next. It's the same sort of functionality. But we need to put this into a bit of a bit, bit of a better trap than this because we don't want it just to skip. We want it to say, hang on a minute, there's been an error, we're going to try again. Now the first thing I would do here is we'll take this code out completely, put in a new tab and call it sub, which is short for subroutine and paste it in here. So we'll create a sub here, subroutine here, call it data load. I'll not talk too much about what subroutines do apart from when we call it within the data and pull further on within the code, we'll call it, it will run and then it will return back to the next lab after you've called it. And calling it is quite straightforward, we just take that same line and change it to call. So that will come here, turn off the trap, call data load, it will go back here, it will run this, come to end sub, and then continue down there. That's how the, the process of a subroutine works. I use subroutines a lot in audit logging. I've got some blog posts about that. What we need to do now is create a bit of an error trap. Now there's a variable um, called script error, which is like an internal variable. And every time a line is executed, it will return a value to that script error. And if it's executed absolutely fine, it'll be zero. And if it hasn't executed fine, it'll be greater than zero. There's a whole list. If we go into the actual reference manual, see the script error, error um, can go up to 12. It does say here that one is no error, um, but that's a bit misleading. If it's more than zero, it's gonna be an error. So that's a bit misleading. So the way we do it, and, it, and it resets every time a line of code executes, so we have to do it right after the, the, the data load. So we'll put in here, we'll, we'll put it into a variable so we can now control it, the script. So now we have it. Remember, and when this executes, this will execute fine, that will revert back to zero, so we have to do it straight away. And then in here, well, we can do it in this point actually, and put sort of an if statement here. So if is greater than zero, then. So now we know we're in a bit of a, a pickle. So what we can do is we can do a full and next loop. Let's 
feet for five seconds, that's a thousandth of a second. And then we'll call data load again. And then we will do if script error is equal to zero, then we shall exit the exit for. Okay, so we've got a fair bit going on there. I'll just talk you through it. So we're going to come through here. We're going to turn off the the error track, the error pop up that stops the um, clip view script from continuing and will give you a fail if you run it from PMT. Uh, we're going to call the data load, which takes us into the subroutine, which attempts to load the data. We then see if it's worked or not by finding out what the script error value is. And obviously if it's anything greater than zero, then we know we've got an issue. We come in here and we say, right, okay, was it greater than zero? In other words, was there an error? Yes, there was. Then we run into a loop, which will loop through 10 times. Keep going. Uh, once we if we hit the loop at the beginning, it'll sleep for 5 seconds, and it will call the data load again. So it's going to go back in, try again, so we'll see if it worked or not. And then if it hasn't worked, it will skip this and go back. So sleep another 5 seconds, skip this and go back. If, it, if that's if it keeps returning, a script error greater than zero. If it does work, it will say, does it equal zero? Yes, it does, that means it has worked. Then the exit for command breaks this loop. It jumps us straight out of here. Then we continue down on the script in this direction. Um, you could add a little bit more to that. So maybe at the end, we could switch the error trap off and then call the data load again. So I'll give it one more attempt, this time with the with the error messaging popping up. Um, and if there is a problem on the, I think it's with the 12th time we've tried it, then it'll fail. And the actual script will fail and you'll get an error message and it won't just continue. Which is possibly a, a better idea than just letting it continue out because if it's persistently failing, you, know, you, want, to, you want to be able to know, you want to know that's happening. But this, we can get you know, extend this to longer sleep durations and more attempts and so on. But that is the basis of an error trap. Okay, a um, lot to take in. Hopefully it was useful. And um, yeah, hope to hear your comments and speak to you again soon. Thank you.